All right, thanks, Nabil. Okay, so Anthony Davis, he said he's trying I'm to. I'm sorry, take... I'm talking. I'm, I'm hearing from him about the oh, players he's happening? played with. <laughs> Hey, you know, you, we're gonna have some you know, Max we'll didn't compliment you, you in the conference room, though. He no said thanks. you were a great player. Um, Max, yeah. who is the leader on the Lakers? Is this a trick question? LeBron James. Hey, you have to ask. By the way, I just got a, I just tweeted back at, Javel, at Pamela McGee, JaVal McGee's <laughs> mom, because I tweeted when they Get signed him, McGee. Yeah, when they signed McGee and KCP. Yeah. You know what Jerry West doesn't do Here. is spend $12 million a year of cap space on McGee. And, and KCP. Why would you do that, Max? Well, I, why would you do that? Because you don't want to waste cap space on players who can who are easily replaceable. But I would say this: Javale upon McGee further review, upon further review, I think I think that um, Javale's mom is right. That four million a year on a two-year deal for Javale McGee is not bad. I was really referring more to KCP, who has all the the kind of. Uh, trappings of a starting two guard, let's say. He looks like he should defend, and at times you can see him do that, and he looks like he can shoot, and at times he can do that, or even sometimes create. But the overall package is less than, like, the whole is, has been less than the sum of his parts. And that is uh, obviously a clutch sports deal, right? They overpaid on a short deal for KCP. They're trying to do business with clutch sports, and let me say something it worked. They got LeBron. This was an inside job. They got, so, so hey, now KCP LeBron. He left a lot of money on the table to come to the Lakers originally. So uh, KCP, why we want, no, he, he, left, he, he got left, seventeen no, million dollars. He, yeah, he that left first a lot. He had a long-term deal with the Pistons that he left on the table. So before we throw that out, you want to let's go add up the money that he made with the Lakers in a so far. System, KCP is excellent. He's an excellent defender, excellent shooter. What he didn't thrive he in can be a he, good defender. Here, he, he can be a good and shooter. And what he didn't thrive in was the chaos that the Lakers had. And hopefully that comes to well, a well. The point is that they got LeBron now. He's obviously the leader of the team. He's the leader of any team that he's been on except for Dwayne Wade that first season in Miami, mm -hmm. and that's why it didn't work ultimately why they lost to the Mavs. But when LeBron is in a place, you can be sure he is clearly and unquestionably the leader of that team, particularly on a franchise where it's not like Pat Riley runs the franchise, Ryan. You know, Pat Riley runs the franchise. you got to accept the coach. you got to accept these different things. That's not the situation with the Lakers. There's no Pat Riley, uh, you know, in the Lakers uh, front office right now. So LeBron is the unquestioned leader of this franchise. Max, I actually agree with Anthony Davis to an extent. I, I would put that roster up against anybody, and in some ways you could favor it over the Clippers. But if I ask 10 different people, 20 different people, who the leader of the Lakers was, you would get multiple answers. Rob Palenka, is it Clutch Sports? Is it LeBron? Is it Vogel? Is it Kidd? Is it Genie? There is no clear-cut leader. The man that they didn't commit to, as I brought up earlier, Frank Vogel. They gave him a three-year deal, and they chose his assistance. You know what that tells me? You're expendable. And as you bring up Pat Riley, when Eric Spolstra was getting undermined or questioned from LeBron, from, from Bosch, from Wade, whatever it may have been, from Clutch Sports, you know what Pat Riley came down and did? He said, LeBron, when this man tells you to get back on defense, when he tells you to run to the corners, when he pulls you out the game, you do what he says, and you and and he's not going anywhere. And they won a championship. No. So the reality is, but there's no Pat Riley here. That's exactly. the point. You don't need to have a Pat Riley to give this man a deal and give him power as coach and make him comfortable. And if I'm going to bring up the Clippers, the reason I favor the Clippers over that, even though this is in the Clippers segment, who's in charge with the Clippers? With any question, Doc. no question, no. Doc Rivers. When Doc Rivers says, "Hey, man." Come out the game. We're running. And then you got to deal whatever. And then you got to deal with Jerry West if you don't, <laughs> don't want to deal with that. Exactly. So there's Steve Bomber put a system in place. Exactly. Yeah. There's no question there. And I don't question the, the Lakers' talent. It's who's in charge. And I was absolutely. There's a lot of disorganization. Abs and LeBron as a but leader. Wait, wait. As a player, he is the leader, as right. he should be. But this isn't the Eastern Conference, baby. He got to so see. I, I understand your analysis. I disagree with the conclusion. The fact is that there is no Pat Riley there. So you're saying, so there's chaos. There's no clear leader. And that may be the case. But in a situation like that, that empowers LeBron. Because ultimately, he like if there's a Pat Riley there, you say, who's really in charge? Pat Riley. But without Pat Riley there, who's really in charge? LeBron and Clutch Sports. What I was so furious about the Lakers with, like for hiring Vogel in the first place, instead of giving LeBron Ty Lue, is, hey, Jeannie, 
this is an inside job. It's a clutch sports inside job. Just <laughs> take what you get. Yes, management loses power, but you guys were terrible. Now you're a powerhouse. So, And that's why I even say, like, the, the KCP thing. Mm -hmm. He got a lot of money short term. Now he gets – and even KCP, my criticism is a little harsh because at the point that they signed him, all the other guys were off the market already. But the point is you may have to overpay a clutch – a clutch client. That's you may fine. have to do business with them. What's curious to me, to your point, what's curious is why is Vogel head coach? Have they realized that, that – is it really a smokescreen that Jason Kidd's really going to be head coach, but they brought in Vogel because it was too difficult from a yep. PR point of view to give Jason Kidd the job? Why isn't Ty Lu the coach? Is that a power play by, I thought, maybe Palinka at the time or an unwillingness of Jeannie to give up power to clutch sports, which didn't make sense to me? But the big picture to me is without a clear leader – Lebr in the front office, LeBron owns the team. And, and as we talk about Ty Lue being hired, I thought it was a poor boom by not bringing him in. Why? Ty Lue is a truth teller. I played for Ty. I've been in two different organizations with him, and he has the respect of stars. So if LeBron's not getting it done, Ty Lue's going to have those car hard conversations. Frank Vogel is a great guy, but as you bring him in, you never commit to him. It is utterly ridiculous that this man couldn't choose his assistant. So whether it was Jason Kidd, whether it was Vogel, you have to make that call. And that's a tough call that the Lakers didn't make. And I believe this year it comes back to bite them because they're going to be tough moments. There's no championship run. There's no season where you don't have some level of uh, turmoil, inconsistencies, pointing fingers. And shoot, not less than a, a, a year ago, probably months ago, People are advising Gene saying, trade LeBron. We don't want him. He messed up what we had. Are you kidding me? Yeah, by the are way, by the way, me? I joke a lot with Ryan since the first time he was on Max and Marcellus on the radio about not getting playing time. But the fact is, you were in the league for 12 seasons and would have gotten much more burn had the league not turned into a three-point, like a stretch five league, mm -hmm. because you could play in the old school league. And, and also, and like jokes aside, you did have the best seat in the house, even in games where you didn't play, because you've been on multiple teams and having watched this stuff up close, had better insight than most you getting soft on me? about these about these this situations. Is, this I'm is being very honest. nice. Oh, oh, you're getting soft? Okay, Max. I'm not getting soft. I'm being, I'm being honest, you know? Like, I, first time he was ever on Max and Marcellus, I wanted him to take us through all eight seconds of the playing time he got the reason. But, but, like, jokes there, aside, there you go. jokes aside, those insights are valuable, and I say all that stuff to, to set this question up. Based on your travels and what you have seen, can this work with the Lakers as presently constructed? Like, I, th I agree with AD they have the best roster. I do not agree they have the best team. Can this work? I, I believe it's a front office to coach to player relationship that has to be in set. And you have to have trust that. And I'm not saying that Jason Kidd will do this, whatever, but between LeBron, Vogel, Jason Kidd, and Hollins, they have to say, hey, man, Vogel, you're our guy. When we, when we run floppy or whatever, pick and roll in the last seconds of a ball game, or LeBron, I want you to pass it to AD because AD has a matchup. They have to go with what Frank says. And if there's any questions, any second thoughts there, they don't get a championship. They don't even achieve what they should as talented as that roster is. Vogel get out of his first year as coach? I'm nervous, bro. I, I'm nervous. I'm nervous for him. And he's a great guy. And he knows his basketball. But he's a great guy. I'm nervous for it. Well, you know what? We're going to find out who the real